Okay, welcome to the first uh, the first flipped classroom video. So we're going to be starting Unit 5. Unit 5 deals with relations and functions. So we're actually going to be doing a bit of graphing, which is going to be a bit of a review of what you guys did in grade 9, because I think you touched on some graphing then. So we'll be starting with how we re how we relate or how we associate sets of data. We'll build on that uh, tomorrow, talking about graphs and interpreting graphs and drawing graphs, and eventually we'll get to talking about functions, which is what we traditionally think of when we talk about graphing. So today we're going to be dealing with representing relations. So this is 5.1. And we think about relations, uh, we often think about family trees, or we think about family, relatives. And in this case, this is a nice way to start off this unit, is by looking at this family tree. Now, for those students in my class, we talked briefly about family trees when we did the uh, problem of the week, dealing with ancestry and how many people could be in the photo, if you remember that. So, I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video here and try these three questions here below, and then continue the video and we'll go through the answers together. Okay, so how is Joseph related to Simon? Uh, well, Joseph is the son of Etienne, who is also the son of Simon. Therefore, that makes Simon Joseph's grandfather. And that would make Joseph Simon's grandson. So how is Joseph related to Simon? Uh, Joseph is his grandson. Uh, second question, how are Angelique and Francois related? Uh, Angelique is the daughter of Etienne. Francois is the son of Marie, and both Etienne and Marie are siblings because they both have the same set of parents. That makes them brother-sister, which makes Angelique and Francois cousins. And how does the family tree show these relations? Well, they do that using lines. Good. So, we'll go over the terminology for this, for this particular section. Now we're going to be talking about sets of data here in this unit 5.1 and a set of data comprises of a number of different objects. This would be a set of data here. In this case we're talking about animals and this would be a set of data here. In this case we're talking about adjectives. So a set is a collection of distinct objects. Here we have our first set and here we have our second set. An blank of a set is one object in the set. We call that an element. An element is an individual object within a set. So if this is the set itself, a bunny would be an element within the set, as would the adjective friendly or cute. A blank associates the elements of one set with the elements of another. And we associate sets by using relations. So a relation associates the elements of one set with the elements of another and here our relation is R. So we're associating that adjective with the bunny or with the animal. So uh, in this case the associations I've made are that bunnies are evil, that dogs are friendly, but dogs are also cute. So an element can be associated with more than one element in the second set. So in this case, dogs associated with friendly and dogs are also associated with cute. Uh, and here we have squirrels associated with cute. So again, this is a set. There's two sets here, two sets of data. Uh, these elements here are animals. Each animal is an object or an element within the set and then we associate them by using relations. All right. Uh, here's another example of sets of data. So here we have a set of fruit and a set of colors. So here we have apple, blueberry, cherry, and huckleberry. Uh, if you're wondering what a huckleberry is, it apparently is that, which looks just like a blueberry to me, but whatever. So we have the colors here and the fruits here. Uh, and just as a note, we represent sets of elements by using um, 
brackets like this. That, that's the typical convention, and that's what you'll see in the textbook. So here's an example. Uh, we can associate fruits with their colors to create a relation. And the association we use is may have the color. So uh, this would be an element in the first set. This would be an element in the second set. And we say that an apple may have the color red. Now there's a few ways that we can represent relations between sets of data or sets of elements. We can use a table. So tables are pretty straightforward. We have uh, the first set of elements here, the second set of elements here. So fruits on the left and colors on the right. And then we have the direct association. So apple may have the color red. Apple may have the color green. So because apple has two associations, we actually write it twice. Uh, blueberry may have the color blue, cherry may have the color red, and huckleberry may have the color blue. Uh, we can also use what we call an arrow diagram. Now an arrow diagram uses ovals. So we have two ovals, and each oval contains a particular set. So this first oval contains the fruits, and this second oval contains the colors. Now, when using arrow diagrams, we always want to show the association at the very top. So the association in this case was may have the color, so we actually write that here, may have the color. Uh, and whereas in the table we wrote apple twice, because apple has two associations, one with red and one with green, here we only write it once, because we're going to show that it has two associations by using two arrows rather than writing it twice. So when using arrow diagrams, we only want to write each element once, regardless of how many times it associates with another element. We'll show the relationships by using arrows. So here we have apple, blueberry, cherry, and huckleberry. Uh, and it is convention to write them in alphabetical order, or chronological or numerical order, whatever the case may be. So here we have uh, the fruits. On the right we have blue, green, and red which are the colors, and then we have the arrows linking the association. So apples may be green and red, blueberries are blue, cherries are red, and huckleberries are blue. Lastly, we can use what we call a set of ordered pairs. So, uh, this is exactly the same way that we represent uh, points on a graph. So you should have seen this last year, but instead of points on a graph or plots, we're actually writing down relations between elements or associations between elements. So uh, this would be a set of, of ordered pairs. This would be one ordered pair here. This would be a second ordered pair, three, four, and five. Now we always write order pairs by opening with a bracket and closing with a bracket here. And then we have each set of ordered pairs, or each ordered pair rather, we write within parentheses here. So uh, here we have apple and red, so implying apple may have the color red. Now it is important to note that relations do have direction. It is important that apple go first because apples may have the color blue but the inverse is not true. Blue may have the color apple, doesn't really work. So it is important that we're writing these from left to right in a way that makes sense. So apple may have the color green, blueberry may have the color blue, cherry may have the color red, huckleberry may have the color blue. And we write that in one, two, three, four, five ordered pairs, just makes sense because we had one, two, three, four, five associations in the table. Okay, so let's put this to use. Now in this example, we are given a table, which we need to interpret in order to draw uh, an arrow diagram as well as a set of ordered pairs. So here we have northern communities can be associated with their territories they are in. Consider the relation represented by this table. So we have communities on the left, so this set of elements on the left, and this set of elements on the right. Uh, describe this relation in words. Now they pretty much give this to us here, uh, but if we had to write the association, we would say uh, 
Hey River is in or is located in and that kind of makes sense. So Hay River is located in Northwest Territories and that's how we're going to associate uh, the two sets of data. Represent this relation as a set of ordered pairs. Well, whenever we're writing ordered pairs we always open up with a bracket and then my first ordered pair is going to go in parentheses here. So I have, and I'll abbreviate these to make it faster, I have Hay River, which I'll call HR, is in Northwest Territories and that's my first ordered pair. My next ordered pair, and I separate all the ordered pairs with, with a comma, is Ikalut, and it is located in Nunavut, and I'll abbreviate that as well. And then another comma, Nanisivik, or however you pronounce that, is located in Nunavut as well, and then I continue. So Old Crow, Old Crow, is in the Yukon, and I won't do the rest, but you get the idea. So then you continue all the way to Yellowknife, and when you're done, then you close it off with a bracket. Now, as an arrow diagram. So whenever we're dealing with our arrow diagrams, we always want to draw our ovals. Here, I'll cheat a bit here. I'll just copy paste. And again, when we're using arrow diagrams, we always want to draw the association. So I'm actually going to use an arrow here and I'm going to draw the association. And in this case we've said the association is is located in. So I'm going to write is located in. And then I'm going to write all my elements from the first set on the left here. So again I'll abbreviate them. So Hey River, Ikalut, Anisivik, Old Pro I'll call the OC, white, and yellow knife. Perfect. And on the right side, I'm going to write the territories. Now, even though we have one, two, three, four, five, six associations, we only have three territories, but they each associate twice. But when we're drawing arrow diagrams, we only want to write each one once. We're going to represent the number of associations with our arrows. So. Uh, Northwest Territories is repeated twice, none of it's repeated twice in Yukon. So we really have tweet three. Uh, I'll write them in alphabetical order. So none of it. Northwest Territories and Yukon. And again, typically, not that it's all that important, but we like to write the elements of a set in alphabetical order or numerical order when we're drawing, when we're writing them in an arrow diagram. So now it's just a matter of using my arrows. So we have Hay River is in Northwest Territories, Ekelut's in Nunavut, Anisivik is in Nunavut, Old Crow in Yukon, White Horse in the Yukon, and Yellowknife. Northwest Territories. Um, oh, that's right, I made a mistake. Anisivik is in Nunavut. There we are. Wherever it is. Perfect. Uh, so now I'm going to ask you to pause the video, try this one on your own, uh, and then when you come back we're going to go through the answers together.